Let's dive into the enthralling life, spectacular career, and shocking death of a Hollywood icon, David Carradine. Born into an acting family, David Carradine forged his own career as a versatile performer known for his work in film, television, and even martial arts. From his early difficulties and accomplishments to his rise to prominence with the classic Kung Fu series, Carradine's career is a fascinating story of devotion and talent. However, the news of his death and investigations surrounding it will leave you surprised. Join us as we peel back the layers of his life, career, and strange death. Early Life and Struggles David Carradine, the eldest son of actor John Carradine, was born on December 8, 1936, in Hollywood, California. His upbringing was a bit chaotic due to his parents' many divorces and remarriages. Growing up in a tumultuous family, he attempted suicide at the age of five, motivated by family discoveries. Despite his challenges, Carradine's fortitude was challenged when his mother filed for divorce, resulting in legal fights and custody conflicts. Carradine grew up in boarding schools, foster homes, and juvenile detention centers, and he frequently traveled to summer theaters with his father. His trek led him to Massachusetts, where he spent the winter milking cows on a Vermont farm. He eventually returned to California, graduated from Oakland High School, and attended San Francisco State University while doing menial jobs and developing a theater career. After immersing himself in the bohemian scene of North Beach and Venice, Carradine encountered legal troubles, including a charge of disturbing the peace. Later, he joined the Army in 1960. He met Larry Cohen, a future partner when stationed at Fort Eustis in Virginia, where he co-founded the Entertainment Unit, a theater troupe. Carradine did, however, endure challenges, including a court-martial for theft. After two years of active duty, Carradine was honorably released from the Army. Despite the difficulties, his time in the military allowed him to express his artistic side, drawing to help with training. Carradine's early life was filled with highs and lows, establishing the groundwork for a career that would eventually lead to him becoming a well-known actor in the entertainment industry. This period of Carradine's life was marked by personal and professional discovery, ranging from difficult beginnings to military service and early family life. The experiences of his formative years influenced the actor, preparing the path for the future chapters of his successful but complicated career. The start of his career in entertainment. After leaving the military, David Carradine pursued a career in acting and was advised to change his name in order to make his own route in the profession. Encouraged by his famous father, John Carradine, David's first performance outside of school was in Romeo and Juliet, which garnered him his father's pride and helpful guidance. Carradine made his television debut in the Armstrong Circle Theater episode, Secret Documents, in 1963, kicking off a long and successful career. His television career included roles in popular shows such as Wagon Train, East Side, West Side, Arrest and Trial, The Virginian, and many more. In 1964, he appeared in The Intruder episode of The Virginian as The Utah Kid. Carradine signed a contract with Universal, which led to his feature film debut in Taggart and Bass Riley's Back in Town. Broadway beckoned in May 1964 when he joined the cast of The Lieutenant, demonstrating his versatility. The first breakthrough. In October 1965, Carradine's second Broadway role in Peter Schaffer's play The Royal Hunt of the Sun marked his first great breakthrough. The play, starring Atahualpa and Christopher Plummer as Pizarro, portrays the demise of the Inca civilization. The production was a hit, with two 60 performances. Carradine's outstanding performance drew the attention of industry leaders opening the door to significant prospects. Reflecting on that time, he noted, Many of the important roles I later got were because the guy who was trying to hire me was in the audience and was blown away. Carradine won the 1965 Theater World Award for Best Debut Performance for his part in The Royal Hunt of the Sun. This was a watershed point in Carradine's career, as he was named one of Broadway and off-Broadway theater world's most promising people. The drama was later filmed in 1968, with Christopher Plummer playing Carradine's role. This stage of Carradine's career showcased his versatility, 
from television appearances to a breakthrough on Broadway. The notoriety he received from The Royal Hunt of the Sun laid the groundwork for his developing career, setting the door for the various and profound parts that would follow in both film and theater. Struggles with typecasting. David Carradine left The Royal Hunt of the Sun in May 1966 and returned to the realm of westerns with the production of Shane. During this time, he received an offer to star with Jill Ireland, expressing his own vision and sense of responsibility for character portrayal. Despite excellent reviews, the sitcom aired for 17 episodes, representing a brief period in Carradine's career. His role in Johnny Belinda is often regarded as salvaging his career. Carradine specialized in supporting roles in westerns, appearing in films such as The Violent, Heaven and Guns, and Burt Kennedy's. However, this is when he started facing the problem of being typecast. In the late 1960s, he also performed off-Broadway in Transgressor Ride Again and appeared as a guest star in The Name of the Game. Carradine also made his television debut in the Night Gallery episode Phantom Farmhouse with David McCallum. That same year, he co-starred with Sally Field as a hippie villain in the well-received television film I May Go Home in the Spring. Despite his popularity, Carradine became dissatisfied with his evil roles, prompting him to leave Hollywood for a year. During this hiatus, he guest starred in episodes of Gunsmoke and Ironside. Dissatisfied with being typecast, Carradine expressed his wish to leave acting, culminating in a year-long absence from the Hollywood scene. His dedication to playing diverse and relevant roles was demonstrated when he was fired just two days before the Broadway premiere of the musical The Ballad of Johnny Potts. Carradine's career during this time demonstrated his perseverance, adaptability, and pursuit of significant jobs. From westerns to television dramas, he overcame the industry's obstacles and made significant contributions despite occasional disappointments. His diverse positions and commitment to his artistic vision paved the way for the next stages of his distinguished career. Boxcar Bertha and Kung Fu. In 1972, David Carradine played Big Bill Shelley in Martin Scorsese's film Boxcar Bertha, co-starring with his then-partner, Barbara Hershey. This partnership was one of the rare times he appeared alongside his father, John Carradine. Notably, Carradine made his feature directing debut with the film You and Me, which stars Hershey and his brothers, Keith and Robert. Despite being filmed in 1972, it was not broadcast until 1975. The same year, Carradine had a notable television debut, starring for three seasons in the hit ABC series Kung Fu. His depiction as Kwai Chan Kai, a half-Chinese Shaolin monk, garnered him both an Emmy and a Golden Globe nod. Kung Fu was crucial in teaching martial arts and Eastern philosophy to Western audiences, alongside Bruce Lee's films. Carradine's character popularized the phrase grasshopper to describe an apprentice. Despite the controversy surrounding a non-Asian actor portraying the lead, the show created job possibilities for numerous Asian-American performers. The disagreement centered on the series' origins, with Bruce Lee's widow asserting his involvement in the concept. However, designer Ed Spielman claimed the concept was his own from years before Lee's success. Carradine debunked the myth in a 2005 interview, contradicting Bruce Lee's assertions and blaming the mistake on another project. Kung Fu ended owing to a number of circumstances, including Carradine's injury, which limited his ability to continue, exhaustion, script changes that lowered the show's quality, and a drop in viewership. The main cause, however, was Carradine's choice to quit for a Hollywood career. Not to forget, he also directed a few episodes of Kung Fu. His annual pay from Kung Fu was reportedly $100,000. Carradine's diverse involvement in the entertainment industry during this time period demonstrated his versatility as an actor and director. However, challenges, conflicts, and personal decisions helped to shape his career and set the path for his future endeavors in the film industry. The Rise to Stardom Following the success of Kung Fu, David Carradine carefully chose the character of racing driver Frankenstein in Death Race 2000 in 1975 to discard the Kane image and further his film career. The cult classic, directed by Paul Bartel and produced by Roger Corman, proved essential 
netting Carradine a sizable profit of 10% of the film's earnings. In the late 1970s, Carradine was cast as Duke Leto Atreides in Alejandro Jodorowsky's cancelled film, Dune. He didn't give up and continued to vary his roles, starring in the 1975 TV movie The Long Way Home and another Bartell and Corman collaboration, Cannonball. He received critical praise in 1976 for his depiction of folk musician Woody Guthrie in Hal Ashby's Bound for Glory, which earned him the National Board of Review Award for Best Actor. Working closely with friend Guthrie Thomas, a singer-songwriter and guitarist, Carradine immersed himself in the part, demonstrating his musical abilities. In Ingmar Bergman's The Serpent's Egg, set in post-World War I Berlin, he played an unemployed alcoholic trapeze artist named Abel Rosenberg, demonstrating his flexibility. Carradine's partnership with Bergman was praised, but it took a turn when the director strongly opposed a sequence involving the butchering of a horse. Despite plans for future collaborations, this encounter prompted Carradine to question Bergman's soul. However, the actor proceeded to demonstrate his versatility. In 1978, Carradine embarked on a one-of-a-kind production, Circle of Iron, based on Bruce Lee's unreleased script. Carradine considered it one of his best works, playing four roles that were originally planned for Lee. Furthermore, television beckoned with Mr. Horn, which Carradine also produced and starred in as Tom Horn, based on a script by William Goldman. In Walter Hill's film, The Long Riders, Carradine co-starred with his half-brothers Keith and Robert as Cole Younger, in 1980, he appeared in the vehicle chase film Safari 3000, expanding his varied repertoire. This decade represented Carradine's rise to prominence, demonstrating his ability to transition between genres and roles, ranging from action blockbusters to historical dramas. The actor's versatility and commitment to one-of-a-kind projects helped him maintain his popularity in the entertainment world. Americana and the Decline in 1981, David Carradine returned to the director's chair with Americana, a project that had originally begun as Around. Carradine starred, produced, and edited the picture. The production process was extensive, lasting 10 years due to finance issues. Despite including friends and family members in supporting roles, Americana struggled with distribution and received little critical recognition. But it did win the People's Choice Award at Cannes Directors Fortnight. Carradine continued his directorial endeavors, working on the unreleased blockbuster Mata Hari, starring his daughter Kalista. His numerous talents included cameo appearances like the one when he played the villain alongside Chuck Norris in Lone Wolf McQuaid. Carradine then returned to regular television programs, appearing in shows including Fall Guys, Airwolf, Fox Mystery Theater, and Partners in Crime. Television films offered another channel for his talent. Carradine's versatility made him a popular choice for roles in low-budget action films. Carradine was nominated for Best Supporting Actor at the Golden Globes in 1985 for his work as the sinister Justin Lamott in the Civil War miniseries North and South. Carradine repeated his role in the 1986 television adaptation of Kung Fu the Movie, which he also produced. Notably, this was the acting debut of Bruce Lee's son, Brandon Lee. Carradine's involvement in the low-budget action picture Behind Enemy Lines demonstrated his willingness to play a variety of roles. He also repeated his role in North and South Book Two, which was broadcast on television in May 1986. Carradine's commitment to the entertainment industry remained strong during this time, as evidenced by his flexibility in film and television ventures. Despite the ups and downs of critical acclaim and distribution issues, Carradine's unwavering dedication to his craft allowed him to move between genres and mediums in the ever-changing environment of the entertainment industry. High demand for video action films. David Carradine found himself in high demand for action pictures geared toward the video market and television in his later years. Throughout the late 1980s and early 1990s, he took on several parts, demonstrating his versatility in both genres, from Oceans of Fire to Six Against the Rock and Misfit Brigade. Carradine was a familiar face in action pictures. He delved into television, making guest appearances on Amazing Stories and Night Heat. 
Film roles like I Saw What You Did and Run For Your Life contributed to his broad resume. Carradine received favorable reviews for his part in Sunny Boy, for which he also contributed to the soundtrack. He worked with Roger Corman on films such as Wizards of the Lost Kingdom 2, Nowhere to Run, and Crime Zone, which he also co-produced. His involvement included Anthony Hickox's Sundown Vampire in Lair and a number of other films he helped make. In 1989, Carradine made a low-budget direct-to-video Swedish action picture called The Mad Bunch, which marked a new chapter in his career. He continued to star in films throughout the early 1990s, including Knight's Children, Crime of Crimes, Animal Protector, and Dune Warriors. His active involvement in the action cinema genre and continued passion for his craft led him to appear in numerous films, including Midnight Fear, Project Eliminator, and Deadly Surveillance. Carradine got Psychotronic Magazine's Most Active Actor in the Universe Award in recognition of his prodigious productivity. In a 2005 interview, he reflected on a period when he worked extremely hard, completing 19 films in 18 months. Despite his passion, he predicted the changing scene of independent films, including the market freeze. His decision to return to the second season of Kung Fu was a turning point in his career during this changing era. The legend continues. Following his appearance as Kane in Kung Fu, The Legend Continues, David Carradine launched a new television series that aired for 88 episodes. Carradine continued his contribution to the Kung Fu franchise's heritage by serving as both producer and director for the series. However, he focused on broadening his acting experience by appearing in films such as The Kill Zone and The Bitter End. Notably, Carradine appeared in a one-of-a-kind Lipton's Tea advertisement during Super Bowl XXVIII, paying homage to the Three Stooges while making a hilarious reference to his Kung Fu character. In 1997, he received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, which was revealed as an April Fool's joke and named after his brother Robert. After Kung Fu, the legend continues, Carradine worked on a variety of film and television productions. Some notable appearances include Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman, The Lost Treasure of Dos Santos, The Rage, and Macon County Jail. He experimented with many genres, such as horror in Nosferatu, The First Vampire, and family adventure in The New Swiss Family Robinson. Carradine continued his productive career, playing minor roles in films such as The Shepherd, The Magic Effect, and Knocking on Death's Door. In 1999, he demonstrated his flexibility by portraying the Demon Tempest in the season one finale of Charmed. Carradine made guest appearances on numerous shows such as Acapulco Heat, Just Shoot Me, and Family Law. Carradine kept a hectic schedule during the 2000s, too. In a unique collaboration, he guest starred as himself in an episode of Lizzie McGuire, sharing the screen with his brother Robert, who played Lizzie's father in the series. David Carradine's journey through the late 1990s and early 2000s demonstrated his unwavering commitment to the entertainment industry as he continued to play a variety of parts and contribute to both television and film projects, Kill Bill and The Rebirth of Fame. David Carradine saw a huge comeback in fame after appearing in Quentin Tarantino's Kill Bill film series, which included Kill Bill Volume 1 and Volume 2. Critics such as Scott Mance praised Carradine's portrayal of the enigmatic assassin Bill, stating that he deserved an Academy Award consideration for his confident and captivating performance. Both Roger Ebert and Richard Roper ranked Carradine among their top 10 Academy Award predictions. While the Academy did not recognize Kill Bill, Carradine garnered a Golden Globe nomination and a Saturn Award for Best Supporting Actor. Despite his initial success, his subsequent appearances were of varying caliber. He experimented with several genres in Last Goodbye, Brothers in Arms, and Miracle at Sage Creek. Carradine's career took an unusual turn in 2005 when he took over hosting duties on the Wild West Tech Channel, succeeding his brother Keith. That same year, he demonstrated his versatility by portraying both himself and the spirit of a deceased man in an episode of the NBC television series, Medium. Carradine expanded his career by becoming a spokesperson for Yellow Book, a publisher of American telephone directories. Despite the variety of jobs,
Carradine's path in the late 2000s foreshadowed both the highs of revival, particularly with Kill Bill, and the obstacles of navigating an ever-changing entertainment industry. Disturbing Death David Carradine's last days in Bangkok took an unexpected turn. He arrived on May 1, 2009, to work on Stretch, his latest picture, and was last seen alive on the 3rd of June. Attempts to reach him that evening failed, so his assistants left without him. When Carradine contacted an hour later, he was told they were across town and he needed to make his own plans. On the 4th of June, catastrophe struck. The 72-year-old actor was found dead in his room at the Swiss Hotel Nye Lert Park Hotel in central Bangkok. Authorities, including Lieutenant Colonels Thirapop Ruangsen, Pirom Jantrafirom, and Colonel Somprasong Yentuam, discovered Carradine naked in the closet with a curtain rope tied around his neck. It appeared to be a hangout. There was no evidence of struggle, and the police assumed he'd been dead for at least 12 hours. The circumstances pointed to a terrifying possibility. Inadvertent self-inflicted asphyxiation. With no suicide note, Thai police presented this explanation. The rope around his neck and genitals complicated the situation. Thai authorities conducted an initial autopsy immediately, with results due a month later. On July 1st, 2009, Michael Bodden, a medical examiner hired by Carradine's family, issued a somber report. Asphyxia was identified as the cause of death, and the way Carradine's body was confined suggested that he took his own life. However, the family opposed this judgment, expressing denial in the face of the awful fact of David Carradine's tragic death. Posthumous Releases David Carradine's cinematic career continued with many posthumous films. Hollywood's busiest actor had about a dozen films in various stages of production. While the majority of these parts were brief appearances or cameos in independent films, they contributed to the actor's career. One of these posthumous releases was the horror picture Dark Fields, which highlighted Carradine's lasting presence. He also appeared in the action picture Bad Cop and the western flick All Hell Broke Loose. Detention, a thriller, showcased Carradine's versatile acting abilities. Notably, he produced Jim Wynorski's Dinocroc vs. Super Gator, Roger Corman's final picture. Ken Tucker of Entertainment Weekly called the film perfect and commended its silly and humorous features. His lifelong love of kung fu was reflected in his role in Yuan Wuping's Chinese kung fu epic True Legend. Yuan Wuping, who previously worked with Carradine on Kill Bill, called the actor a good friend and acknowledged his effort to bring Chinese martial arts to Hollywood. True Legend allowed Carradine to exhibit his knowledge of Tai Chi, Qigong, and Chinese medicine. His engagement expanded to the music industry with the music video for Devil by Hours, which featured material from filmmaker Michael Maxis's short film made four years prior. Carradine's final film performance was in the cult independent film Night of the Templars, directed by Paul Sampson. Surprisingly, the picture included unsettling references to asphyxiation, a foreboding element eerily related to Carradine's death. Carradine co-produced a documentary about luthier Stuart Mossman called The Legend of Stuart Mossman, Modern Stradivari, which was published in 2010. Carradine and his brothers performed music on Mothman guitars, adding a musical element to his posthumous efforts. Carradine's final small-screen appearance occurred on the television series Mental, which aired shortly after his death. He also appeared on an episode of Celebrity Ghost Stories, where he detailed his belief in a haunted closet. This program was shot four months before his death, providing a fascinating element to his posthumous history, his love of martial arts and music. When David Carradine was cast as Kai Chan Kane in Kung Fu, he had no prior knowledge of martial arts but relied on his background as a dancer and experience in swordplay, boxing, and street fighting. He collaborated with martial arts instructors David Chow and later Kam Yuen to ensure the accuracy of his representation. Carradine, who did not consider himself a master, considered himself a kung fu evangelist. By 2003, he had achieved enough expertise to produce instructional DVDs on Tai Chi and Qigong. In 2005, he visited China's Shaolin Temple, where Abbot Shir Yongxin acknowledged Carradine's contributions to the promotion of Shaolin and Kung Fu culture. 
Along with his acting career, Carradine demonstrated musical skills by playing the piano, guitar, and flute. In the 1970 Ironside episode, Quincunx, he sang I Stomped on a Flower as part of a flower power beatnik duo. Carradine released the album Grasshopper in 1975. His musical ability extended to film performances as he performed Woody Guthrie's songs in Bound for Glory. In the Kung Fu series, he created a bamboo flute that Warner Brothers planted on his land. This flute-making ability continued into Circle of Iron and even appeared in Kill Bill. Carradine's interest in music included writing and performing theme songs for films such as Americana and Sunny Boy. The opening line of the Sunny Boy theme, Paint, composed while filming Americana in 1973, is placed on his headstone. He contributed significantly to the soundtrack of American Reel and wrote the score for You and Me. Together with his brother Robert, he established the band Cosmic Rescue Team, also known as Soul Dogs, which performed at small venues and charities. Carradine's diverse talents shined through not only as an actor, but also as a martial arts evangelist and musician, adding to the fabric of his illustrious career. Personal Relationship Issues After joining the United States in 1960, David Carradine proposed to Donna Lee Becht, whom he met at Oakland High School. They married on Christmas Day and received their daughter, Callista, on April 1962. Everything seemed to go normally until after his military duty, when he pursued acting in New York. This led to his marriage getting dissolved in 1968. He then met actress Barbara Hershey during Heaven and Guns, and they lived together until 1975, appearing in films such as Boxcar Bertha, their relationship deteriorated, resulting in Carradine's affair with Susan Hubley following his detention in 1974. Carradine's second marriage, while being engaged to Hubley, occurred in 1977 with Linda Ann Gilbert. Linda, who had previously married Roger McGuinn, gave birth to Carradine's daughter, Kansas, in 1978. Multiple marriages followed, the first to Gail Jensen and the second to Marina Anderson. Carradine married Annie Bierman on December 26, 2004, in a coastal Malibu ceremony supervised by his attorney, Vicki Roberts. Carradine's past marriage left him surrounded by a younger crowd, including his wife Annie, who is 24 years his junior. In one of his final interviews, Carradine emphasized his 71-year-old vigor, which he attributed to a balanced diet and connections with people 10 to 20 years younger. He joked about dating women his own age, saying, most women are much older than me. Carradine's personal relationships, characterized by highs and lows, reflect the various stages of his life. Arrests and Prosecutions Carradine fell into difficulty in San Francisco in the late 1950s when he was detained on suspicion of attacking a police officer. His plea to a lesser charge of disturbing the peace was his early brush with the law. During his army service, Carradine was court-martialed several times, primarily for theft. After changing his identity to David and pursuing an acting career, he ran into legal problems again. In 1967, he was arrested for marijuana possession, which added a black mark to his record. Kung Fu's reputation did not protect him from trouble in 1974, when he was charged with attempted robbery and criminal harm. Under the influence of peyote, Carradine's roaming expedition, which included breaking into a neighbor's house and indulging in unusual behavior, resulted in legal ramifications. Despite pleading no contest to the mischief charge and receiving a suspended sentence, a civil suit resulted in damages of $20,000. Carradine was arrested for possession of marijuana in 1980 while filming Safari 3000 in South Africa. He said he was framed by the apartheid authorities for dancing with Tina Turner. The 1980s saw two DUI arrests, the latter instance resulted in a quite harsh penalty, which included probation, jail time, community service, and rehabilitation. In 1994, while filming Kung Fu, The Legend Continues, Carradine was arrested after being accused of kicking a door open at a Rolling Stones performance in Toronto. He said that his actions were intended to prevent being overwhelmed by supporters. Carradine's legal contacts reveal the nuances of his personal life which has been distinguished by both success and problems. The lawsuit filed after his death. Following David Carradine's unfortunate death, 
His widow launched a wrongful death case against the French production company MK2, accusing them of carelessness while making the movie Stretch in Bangkok. The case, filed in Los Angeles Superior Court, claimed that MK2 did not provide proper care for Carradine, which contributed to his early death. According to the lawsuit, MK2 assigned Carradine an assistant, who called him on the night of his death to set up a dinner with the film's director. However, when the assistant was unable to contact him, the film crew opted to leave without him. An hour later, Carradine contacted the assistant, only to discover that the crew had already left town, leaving him alone. The events took a fatal turn when Carradine was found dead in his Bangkok hotel room. The case claimed breach of contract and carelessness and sought specific damages from MK2. The legal case drew attention to the circumstances surrounding Carradine's death, causing a ripple effect in conversations regarding film production companies' duties to ensure the safety of their actors and crew. The complaint filed by Anne Carradine, the actor's wife, highlighted concerns about MK2's accountability in meeting its contractual commitments. The court actions were a combination of seeking justice for David Carradine and shedding attention on potential flaws in the filmmaking process. In a subsequent development, David Carradine's wife settled the lawsuit with MK2 in 2011. While the specifics of the settlement remained classified, the resolution suggested that the parties involved had reached an agreement. The settlement put an end to the legal chapter, but many elements remained unknown. The case and its resolution added another dimension to the already convoluted story of David Carradine's death. Although the legal proceedings focused on specific areas of carelessness and breach of contract, the larger discussion regarding the events leading up to Carradine's death remained. The circumstances surrounding the actor's death are yet unknown. Thai officials never formally revealed the findings of their investigation, leading to several theories, including the commonly reported cause of autoerotic asphyxiation. The legacy left behind. The news of David Carradine's death sent shockwaves through Hollywood and among his followers worldwide. Tributes came in honoring his life and legacy, but his death triggered a media frenzy that frequently overshadowed his professional accomplishments and personal troubles. Carradine's untimely departure left several projects unfinished and other plans unfulfilled, signaling the end of an era. Despite the controversy surrounding his death, his legacy continues. His career spanned four decades and demonstrated variety and resilience. From his breakout role in Kung Fu to his return in Kill Bill, Carradine became associated with a tough, philosophical, on-screen presence. Carradine's legacy goes beyond his roles and includes his effect on Western martial arts. His portrayal of Kuei Chang Kane presented Eastern philosophy to Western viewers, defying prejudices and opening the path for more varied representation in Hollywood. His artistic development has included forays into music, directing, and writing, demonstrating the variety of his abilities. Carradine's journey into music and poetry revealed another side of his artistic personality. Albums like Grasshopper and his contemplative poetry offered glimpses into his thoughts and emotions. As a director and producer, Carradine made his mark on productions such as Americana and episodes of Kung Fu The Legend Continues. His books, especially the autobiography Endless Highway, provide intimate details about his life and philosophy. Carradine's encounter with Eastern wisdom encouraged many people to regard martial arts as a way of life rather than merely a physical practice. Exploring Carradine's legacy reveals a multidimensional artist motivated by a desire to connect with viewers on a human level. His influence on movies, martial arts, music, and literature is palpable, reminding us that David Carradine's legacy reaches far beyond the screen, leaving an indelible mark on the world of arts and entertainment. Thanks for watching. See you in our next video.